Oh, hey, just doing a little light reading. Um, so I got a comment um, from someone who was like, Hey, Sands, um, my wife wants to go to the beach for a week so she can sit around reading romance novels by this guy. Um, but I don't know what to do with myself. And then my wife said, Hey, you like to fish? Why don't you go fishing like all week? And I was like, Yeah, that's cool, but like I only catch bluegills and bass. Like I don't know how to surf fish. So I was like, Well, what if we put together a starter pack? Like this is what you need. This is your starter pack to go fishing on the beach in the surf. So we're going to do that right now. Hey, which reminds me, if you've got ideas for a video that you'd like to see, put a comment in there. It'll give me something to do <laughs> and while it's raining and uh, miserable out. Hey, and thirdly, if you haven't already and you want to subscribe, hit that little subscribe button down there, and then you can follow Sands in the Surf all summer long. All right, let's go get that starter pack. All right, my surf fishing friends, not only are we going to put together a starter kit for surf fishing, we're going to do it for under $65. We're starting off by going into the Oak Island Sporting Goods Shop right here on the island, and we're picking up a North Carolina fishing license. Hey, you want to have a license, you don't want to get a ticket, right? All right, first thing we're going to put in our starter kit is a rod and a reel. You'd be like, wow, those could be really expensive, like $100, $200. No, we're going to start off cheap. We're going to get a Shakespeare rod. They got spinning combinations here for $44. It's a 10-foot pole. Now, Shakespeare's not the best rod and reel, I'm not going to lie, but if it lasts you a couple of weeks it's probably worth it and why do you want to spend a hundred two hundred dollars for something you're not sure you're gonna really want to do start off cheap get the rod and reel set and if you like it you can upgrade to a pen or something bigger and more expensive later on the other thing I wanted to mention about this rod and reel combination is it comes with mono line already on it and it's rated 15 to 30 pounds so you're good to go you got your line you got your rod and reel let's pick up a double drop rig there are a lot of double drop rigs out there. You can make your own, but you can just buy a store-bought one and it saves you a lot of time. And eh, they're not too expensive. They come, some of them more fancy with more beads. I like the simple ones. I just get a simple one for a place to put the hook and the weight. And maybe they got a couple orange beads because orange tracks the fish. And, uh, and you're good to go. So pick that up and let's go get some hooks. Now, there are a lot of hooks out there. And there are a lot of sizes of hooks. So let me explain this to you. If you have a size 3, a size 2 or size 1, a 3 is going to be bigger than a size 1 hook. But then the hooks start going up. A 1-aught, a 2-aught, a 3-aught. So a 1-aught is actually smaller than a 3-aught. It's confusing, I know. So let me help you out. Here's what I think you should do. Buy a number 2, number 1, or number 1-aught circle hook. That's going to be a great size. You're going to catch your pompano with those. You're going to catch whiting with those. You can even catch reds or black drums with those. So it's a perfect hook. Grab the circle hooks because circle hooks almost hook the fish themselves. You don't have to jerk the rod back and set the hook. The fish picks it up and the hook turns into the side of the hook of the fish's mouth. It's great. All right, let's talk about weights. Depending on the surf depends on the size of the weight you're going to want. I'm going to suggest you get a triangle weight or pyramid weight that is either a four or three ounce. So this is your basic four ounce pyramid weight right there. Grab that and you're going to be ready to go. All right, we're going to take a break right here from shopping and we'll show you how to set up your double drop rig. Depending on which kind of rig you got, depends on which kind of latch you're going to have to put on your weight. This one right here, you just easily open up. That makes sense. This one's a little more complicated. You're like, how do I open this thing up? Basically what you do is you pinch one side and then you push that metal sleeve up and it's going to open it up. And you can move that sleeve back. You can slip the weight on simple as this and then you push it back together let's put the sleeve back over you got to pinch it a little bit tight and wait for it to click now you're going to hear it kind of click in there you're going to know it's in the right spot just like that when you're ready to get it off you just pinch the side again you push the sleeve back over and you can change out a weight if you want to go from a three to a four so no problem there whatsoever now next we need bait we got our hooks we got our weight we got a rig what are we going to use for bait there's a lot of bait in here there's fish there's mullet squid I mean, all these baits can work for different fish at different times of the year, but there's one bait that is going to catch mostly every fish, mostly every time of the year, and that is shrimp. So here we got some frozen shrimp. A lot of people say don't use frozen shrimp. Well, it works. They like it. It tastes like ice cream. But if you can find fresh shrimp, go ahead and grab a bag of that because you know what? Probably like the fresh shrimp too. So you can try it out and see which one you like better. All right, one more thing before we check out. We're going to pick up a sand spike. Basically, the sand spike goes into the sand. Your reel and rod goes into the sand spike, and then you can load up new bait, or you can just sit down and wait for the fish to catch up with you because you've been catching so many of them. You're tired. All right, that's it. Ready to check out. Hey, the good people at Oak Island Sporting Goods Shops are going to hook you up. They're going to help you out. So stop by there and grab this stuff, and then we're just about ready to go fishing. 
Last stop, we're going to stop by our tool shed and we're going to pick up a couple of tools. Some pliers, get the hook out of the mouth. A tape measure, in case we catch a big fish and we need to measure it, make sure it's legal. I uh, like to just use the wooden ruler one. This is actually made for fishing, so I'm going to bring that. And a knife. That's not a knife. That's a knife. Hey, I used to use a steak knife for years. You can just get one out of your kitchen drawer, so you don't have to spend money on any of those items. All right, now we're heading down to the beach. Put your sand spike in near the water, right on the edge, and do this circular motion, and it will just go in really nice and easy, and you can get it in really pretty far down, and then you can stick the uh, your rod right in there. So that's an easy way to do it. All right, here's your next tip. If your toes are in the water, you might encounter one of these. It's a jellyfish, but this is a cannonball jellyfish, and they're relatively harmless to humans. So you can pick it up, and you can just throw it back in the water. The turtles like to eat them. They make great turtle chow. All right. Speaking of things that like to eat stuff, this right here is the gulls. And this is a laughing gull right there, and he's come to eat my bait. And I'll tell you something, you could turn around and start heading to the water, and if you have your shrimp just out like that exposed, they're just going to swoop down, and they're going to clean off all your shrimp. You're going to turn back around and be like, where did all my bait go? So you might want to keep it covered up, or just put your tackle box on top of it, and keep the gulls away from it. All right, if you did all that, with this equipment, I'm telling you, you can catch a fish. And that's what I did. Here's a nice little whiting. I'm going to take him over here. I'm going to get out my trusty measuring stick and see how big he is hmm seems to be about 12 inches and that right there is a fish taco he's going in the bucket all right one last tip when you get home turn on the hose and rinse off your gear rinse off your rod rinse off your reel and rinse off the rig and the fresh water gets the salt water out salt water is really corrosive and you can even keep those shakespeare rods and reels in good shape by just rinsing them off when you get home so first, thanks for watching the video all the way to the end. I hope the starter pack was helpful. Hope you can get out there, grab yourself some gear, and hit the surf. Um, if you want to watch another video, I loaded one up there for you. It's pretty good. And if you haven't yet subscribed, hit that little subscription button right there. All right, I got to get back to finding out what Ronnie and Liz are doing.